Thou exalt, said the Lord God of all the heavens. Let the glory be upon God on earth. Let the glory be above God on earth. Father, we love you. Father, we worship you. We give you reverence and adoration and honor that you alone deserve. As we open your word, we pray for understanding. We pray for wisdom. We pray for knowledge into the depths of your word. By the entrance of your word, bring understanding. By the entrance of your word, bring knowledge. Grant us wisdom, knowledge. Give us answers into your word. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And unto you we lift our voice in praise. You are the Lamb upon the throne. For you are glorious, and you are worthy to be praised. You alone are the lamp, the light upon the throne. And unto you we lift our voice in praise. You are the lamp upon the throne. Yes, we give you glory. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. We worship you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. For you are glorious, and you are Worthy to be praised, you are the Lamb, the Lamb upon the throne, and unto you we lift our voice in praise, you are the Lamb upon the throne. Oh, you are the Lamb. Upon the throne, Jesus, you are the Lamb. You are the Lamb upon the throne. You are the Lamb upon the throne. We thank you for the cross, O Lord. We thank you for the piercing nails. Thank you for the price that you paid for us. That have drawn us closer, O God, to be partaker of your glory. Let your name be exalted above all the name of oh Lord, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We adore you, Lord. Let our glory fill our heart. We worship you, Lord. We glorify your holy name. Be exalted. Be exalted, O oh Lord. Let our glory be up, O God, on earth. Today we want to consider our studies from the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation, the chapter number 10. We want to pick it from the verse number 18. Sorry, number 8. The verse number 8. Revelation chapter number 10. The verse number 8. I want to be sure if we completed that one the other time. And the voice which I heard from heaven spoke unto me again and said, Go and see the little book which is upon the hand of the angel. Let me jump to 11. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy against before many people and nations. All right. Seems we've finished that part. Sorry. So we want to go straight to the chapter number 11. Chapter number 11. Revelation chapter 11. Let's read the verse number 1. 
And that was giving me a read, like unto the road. And the angels stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. Rise up and measure the temple and measure the people. Meaning that they are going to be assessed. They are going to be assessed. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the time after the rapture when the Antichrist will take over and begin to rule all over the earth. And there was given to me a reed like unto a road. And the angels stood saying, Rise up and measure. Rise up and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship the ring. But the court which is without the temple liveth out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot. Forty and two months. The holy city. So this was the revelation that the Lord gave unto John. The measure of the temple. The measure of the temple. God want this church to be awakened by then. The church must be awakened. Let's read something from Daniel chapter 8. Daniel had a similar situation. Daniel chapter number 8. We want to read the verse number 12. Daniel chapter 8. Daniel 8. All right, let's speak from verse 9. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which was exceedingly great, toward the south and toward the east, and towards the pleasant land, and was great even to the host of the heaven, and it cast down some of the hosts under the star to ground, and stamp upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the hosts, and by him daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of the sanctuary was cast down. The place of the sanctuary was cast down. And the host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And it cast down the truth to the ground and practice and uh, prospered. Then I heard one saint speak, and another said unto me, that certain saints which spark, how long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifices and transgression of the desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. Measure up. Because of the wickedness that was going on in the church, because during that time, the enemy is going to take over the church. And everything which is going to be do done in that temple is not going to bring glory to God. Satan will take over the church. Satan will use the church for his own agenda. Today we see it all over the world. That people claim that they are worshipping God. But in the churches, people have built or buried dead people, dead animals. You can name them. They manifest or they come into the news every now and then. A pastor buried people under the temple. In their pulpit, they are doing all kinds of this wickedness. For this reason, the Lord said, measure up. Measure up. See what is inside the hearts of those people there. See what is inside the mind of the people there. Beloved, this is not a time to join any church 
as you want. Let me jump Daniel chapter 8, verse 26. Say, and the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore shut thou up the vision for it shall be for many days. And I, Daniel, fainted and I was sick. Certain days afterwards I rose up and did the king business as I was astonished at the vision. But none understood it. Daniel saw all these things. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Daniel 9, 27. Let's read what Daniel also saw. 9, 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall call the sacrifices and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of the abomination, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolation. Beloved, the days ahead of human beings are not something that we, are not something that we are going to be happy about. We have sad days ahead of us. We have sad days ahead of us. And that day, that day is not going to be a day to rejoice. That day is not going to be a day to celebrate. Now people are celebrating in the church 24-7. People are rejoicing 24-7 in the church. Instead of mourning and crying and wailing, waiting upon the Lord, people are rejoicing daily. Beloved, let us be awake. Let us be awake. Because the time where we find ourselves is very, very, very dangerous. He gave him the power he gave John to see what is about to happen. Now let's jump to verse number three. And I will give power unto my two witness, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. Here he is talking about two witnesses. The Bible never mentioned who they are. But they are going to be given power to witness. For what? Are their witnesses going to affect people's life for three and a half years? According to Daniel's revelation. For three and a half years, during this time, God is going to raise two prophets. Two prophets. To witness to people. Daniel, the chapter number 12, verse number 6. Daniel chapter 12, let's say the chapter 11 first. Chapter 11, Daniel 11, 2. He said, and now we, as I show thee the truth, behold, there shall stand up yet. Three kinds of Persia, and the four shall be far richer than they all. And by his strength, though his riches, he shall stir up all against the rim of Grisha. That's not the point. The point. All right, let's read the verse uh, Daniel chapter seven, verse twenty-five. Daniel seven twenty-five, talking about the two witnesses. Seven twenty-five. Chapter 7, verse 25 says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. They shall be given unto his hand until time and times and dividing of them. So here he was talking about the Antichrist that will be given power 
to exercise authority. And if chances is given unto him, he shall change so many things. But he will give him that authority. So, here he said he will give to prophets. They are going to witness the power of God. Under their power, they are going to testify about the mighty works of God. They will be clothed with sackcloth. In verse 4, he said, These are the two olive trees. And the two candles stand standing before the God of the earth. These are the two olive trees. They are two olive trees. Zachariah chapter 4. Zachariah chapter 4. Zachariah spoke about these prophets. Zachariah saw these prophets and spoke about them. They are two olive trees that will stand before God and declare the mind of God. Zechariah chapter 4, please read the verses number 11 to 14 with me. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candle stand and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches? We threw the two golden pipes, emptied the golden oil out of themselves. And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. These are the two anointed ones. Meaning that during the reign of the Antichrist on earth, God is still going to have a voice. The voice of God is not going to bring peace to sinners as it is today. As it is today, when you confront a brother or a sister of a particular sin that a person is indulging himself or herself in, the people feel that you are judging them. These two witnesses, they will bring the judgment of God on earth. Sinners are not going to be happy. Wicked people who have rejected God and doesn't want to have anything in common with God are not going to be happy either. Why? Because they are not going to say things that people want to hear. They are not going to declare what man intends to hear. Rather, they are going to say what God wants his people to hear. They are going to declare what God wants his people to hear. Beloved, we are standing in the time where all these Bible prophecies are going to be there. And people who are willing to serve God will have a reason to serve God. They will have a reason to serve and walk with God. Malachi, the chapter number four. Malachi, chapter number four. Please let's read something over there. The days ahead of us are not going to be days that people are going to rejoice at all. Chapter four, chapter four. Verse 5 and says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and the dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with cults. Well, there are many people who are claiming to be Elijah today. But I believe, I believe, that Elijah might be yet to come. We don't know how he's going to be, how he's going to appear as a human being. But I personally believe that Elijah is going to be the spirit of Elijah. The spirit of true prophets 
that will fill the earth and that will declare the mind of God. There is not going to be one particular person. Now this person is Elijah. I don't believe in that. But it is the spirit that dwell upon man that will speak the wisdom of God and call people into repentance. And today we have many people. I am one of those people who are declaring the mind of God. Elijah was a genuine prophet that directed the hearts of people from themselves to the mind of people from themselves. He said, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Leaves, I come and smite the earth with curse. So when the spirit of Elijah take place, people are going to serve God. God is going to be there for his people, and his people are going to be there for him. The spirit of Elijah. So, let us be aware that we are not waiting for another time again. The time and the season where we find ourselves, we have everything that we need to surrender to God and to run to God. And to seek his face than never before. Let's read something from Genesis chapter number 5. Genesis chapter 5. And we want to pick it from the verse number 24. 524. And Enoch walked with God and he was not. For God took him away. This is the prophet that stood with God. Walk with God. Live with God. And rapture took them. So before the days where the Antichrist would take over everything, the spirit of Elijah will consume the earth. But this is another story entirely. Here, during the revelation, he is giving us two olive tree. Bible never mentioned their names. Therefore, we don't want to give names to them. God is able to give names to his children. If he has not given us a name, we will not try to give them names. Verse 5 of Revelation chapter 11. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceed out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Those people that will try to have these two witnesses, they will be destroyed until their time is up. Nobody can kill them. Nobody can harm them. These have power to shut heaven and that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. During their reign, during their reign, they will have power to cause drought on earth. But it shouldn't rain. They will speak to heaven and heaven will respond. They will have power to shut up heaven. And they will have power over waters to turn them into blood. You see, the power that was given to Moses, the power that was given to Elijah, these are the same spirits that is going to manifest on earth again. They have power to close, so a space of Moses and Elijah again. Jesus met them on the transfiguration. I don't want to say they are because here Bible never mentioned them. But according to Zachariah, they have been there for all over this side. So I'm presumably thinking that these witnesses can be. It can be, please. Don't say, but again, I said it's going to be Elijah and Moses. No. 
Never mention them, but they are going to operate like them. They are going to manifest in their anointing. And they will turn water into blood and smother the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Did you hear that? They will smother the earth with all plagues. What happened to Moses' ministry? He brought ten kinds of plagues upon the children of Egypt. Moses did that. These two witnesses will have the same anointing that Moses operates on. Ladies and gentlemen, let us prepare for the days ahead of us are not going to be days that we are going to be rejoicing. Mm. It is not going to be the day that we are going to celebrate at all. It's going to be a day that humanity are going to cry. But it is not going to go anywhere. Why? Because the anger of God will fall upon the people on earth. Nobody will be able to turn it down. Why? Because the church has been raptured. And men on earth are going to be full of sorrow. The chastening of God is going to continue like that. Per adventure, he might be able to save those who are ready for his coming. Let's read something from First Samuel. First Samuel, the chapter number uh, seven. Samuel. All right. Let's pick six, second. Second Samuel chapter seven verse fourteen. Second Samuel, the chapter number seven. We want to pick the verse number 14. 14 says, I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten in him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. The chastening of God in those days of tribulation is the chastening. God is going to use a very strong hand upon humanity. Per adventure, he may send few to himself. See, I will design anything that is necessary to turn the hearts of men to myself. He wants to turn the hearts of men. The purpose of these two witnesses is to turn the hearts. The purpose of prophets are to turn the hearts of men from themselves to God. In a prophet who is not turning the hearts of men from themselves to God is not sent by God. It's not sent by God. Psalm number 2 verse 9. Psalm 2 verse 9 reads, And I was with thee, whatsoever thou wantest, and have cut off all thy enemies out of thy sight. And I made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in earth. God thinks about us. God loved us. And he desired the best for us. He wants the best for his children. He wants the best for his children. But it's rather unfortunate. Men, humanity are not looking for the best for themselves. Humanity are not looking for the best for themselves. And for this reason, they stir up the anger of God. But God will not continue to be angry at man. He wouldn't. Because he has a time frame set for his own works. Psalm 89 verse 32. Then will I visit their transgression with a rod and their iniquity with stripes. God will continue to visit us. 
He will visit people to punish them. Or he will visit people to educate, to train. The visits of God comes for training or for punishment. In that training, he exhorts us, he admonishes us, encourages us. Beloved, let us be awake. This is the time of awakening to rise up in natural and begin to pursue God and to know the mind of God for his children. God will not continue to tolerate the wickedness of the hearts of man. He will not. Neither will he continue to strive with man. But he has given a day of mind destruction. But before he will destroy the world, he will give man ample time to repent. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 4. He loved me, but with the righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with iniquity for the meek of the earth. Did you hear that? He will reprove the iniquity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smother the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Before God will destroy the wicked, he will warn the righteous. He will allow the plague to come. He will allow the plague to come. In the days of Moses, God allowed plague to come in the children of Egypt. But with the Israelites, they never experienced any harm. He will continue to reveal himself. He will continue to reveal himself. His love is amazing. The love of God for humanity is amazing. And if man can come before this God and seek his ways and desire his plan for us, peace shall be ours. Lamentation, the chapter number 2. Lamentation, chapter 2, verse 8. Verse 8 said, The Lord our purpose to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He has stretched out a line. He has not withdrawn his hand from destroying. Therefore he made the ramparts and the wall to lament. They linguished together. The destruction of God is coming upon the earth. Destruction of God is coming upon the earth. Therefore let humanity come to themselves. Let humanity come to their senses and begin to flee. Because the wrath of God, no human being can stand. In the first Corinthians chapter 4, Apostle Paul said in verse 21, What will ye say? Shall I come unto you with a rod, or in love, or in the spirit of meekness? Shall I come to you? To destroy you with my rod. A rod will be given. A rod will be given. And that rod is a rod of correction. It's a rod of awakening. It's a rod that will bring people to, them, to their senses. Per adventure that they shall turn unto God. Now let's see. From here. There is going to be physical death. Now let's read from Revelation, the chapter number 11. We are in verse 7 now. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them. And he shall overcome them and kill them. A power will be given to these two witnesses after they had finished their work, a power will be given to them as Jesus has finished his work. Power was given to the beast to fight with the Messiah. And therefore death took away Jesus Christ. In the same way, after the two witnesses has finished their assignment, they will be given Power for Satan to kill them. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. 
And as it is appointed unto a man who wants to die, but after that there is a judgment. Those angels, as those prophets, will die physically. I will not be surprised that it could be also Elijah and Enoch. These were the two people that never saw death on earth. That they will be given the power to taste death. I don't want to go back. But be whatever it is. These two angels, uh, 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 witnesses, are going to have and going to taste death. It is appointed unto every man to die. It is appointed and on that day, the appointments will come upon these two also to die. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. For since by man came there, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so Christ shall all be made alive. These witnesses are going to die. They are going to be killed. But they are not going to remain dead. Verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Where also our Lord was crucified. Sodom and Egypt. Where also our Lord, our Savior was crucified. So in other words, the plane that Jesus died, spiritually, there is a name given to that. And that is the same city where these two witnesses are going to be killed. Hmm. Well, are they going to remain dead? I don't think. Verse 9. And they of the people and kindreds and sons and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and have and shall not suffer their dead body to be put into a grave. They will be lying on the streets. CNN will cover that because in those days, and the person such like these two witnesses are going to be chased after every day. They are going to perform many wonders. And because of the wonder that they are going to be performed, they are going to be threats to human beings. Satan will succeed killing them. And after he has killed them, it is going to be general news breaking news that those angels are dead why am i using angels those witnesses are dead the whole world will desire to know them the whole world will desire to come to their dead ground and witness what is going on so the bible says what will happen to them is they will be given they will be given three and um, three days they'll be lying on the streets and nobody will attend to them people will be viewing them people will be going to them watching them on the streets but there is not much that they can do on that day Media will be taking their pictures all over. The news will be broadcasting the death of these people. But for three days, for three days after, let's see what will happen after them. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets Tormented them that dwell on earth. How do they torment them? They cause tender, they cause drought, they brought plagues. Because of all these things, the citizens on earth, sinners, 
will not be happy. As they are not happy about the righteous people among them. As Muslims are killing Christians. As Hindus are killing Christians. That is how it's going to be. They will never be happy to have these two witnesses on earth. See, they will seek for any way to kill. And after they have been killed, they are going to marry. They are going to give gifts Valentine's Day. They are going to celebrate the death of these two witnesses. It's going to bring jubilation on earth. It's going to bring celebration on earth. Men are going to rejoice. Men are going to rejoice. Because they will feel relieved for a while. They will feel relieved for a while. But that wouldn't be the end. I want you to understand there is no hiding place. The death of the righteous people should not be celebrated. Because it means nothing to you. It means all things to God for the glory. The moment the enemy will strike a righteous person, he weakens his strength. So let's see. Satan killed Jesus Christ and he regretted of doing that. But Paul said in second book of First Corinthians that if the prince of this world would have known what it meant to kill the Messiah, they wouldn't have ventured at all. He wouldn't have even tried. But because of ignorance, he did that. Thinking that he was killing and crucified the Messiah. And that would be the victory, but it wasn't. It never brought victory. It never brought one, and it is never going to bring one. The death of the saints are not something that the world should rejoice. Why? Because the death of the saints bring pains to sinners. Let's read the verse number 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood up their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw him. Who saw them? Wow. As Jesus resurrected on the third day, these people are going to die for three and a half. They will not be buried. They will be lying on the street. They will never go to decay for three days. God will put them to sleep. There will never be any doctor that would set them even from where they are lying. They will be lying on the streets. It will never come to the mind of people to remove them. If they are going to lie in the hospital, nobody is going to bury them. Be whatever it is. Is going to be in a public notice. And after three and a half days, life will come back to them. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the death, the same spirit will come upon them and they will triumph over death. They will triumph over death. They will overcome death. Death, where is your power? Death, where is your authority? For Jesus Christ. The lion of the tribe of Judah had overcome and he will overcome again. His spirit will come upon these two witnesses and they will rise up. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 to 17. Blotted out the handwriting of the ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us and took it of the way, nailing it on the cross. Having spoiled the principalities and powers, he made sure of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of holiday, or for the new moon, or for the Sabbath day, which are shadow of things to come. But the day is of Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, we represent Christ, and Christ will always triumph. Everything that Satan had against us has been abolished. It has been destroyed. Every secret of Satan against the righteous 
has been judged and has been condemned. Understand this? The Lord has given a time. And that time is going to be a time of glory. These are the witnesses. After three days they will rise up. And they, and they will go and continue where they ended. Verse 11, and after three and a half days, the spirit of life came from God, entered into them. They stood up on their feet, and great fear fell upon those who were on earth. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up unto heaven, and a cloud and their enemies beheld them. Rapture. They will also see rapture. Mm. They will see rapture. Beloved, let us see what is remarkable about these witnesses. They are going to be people sent by God. They are going to declare the word of God. They are going to reveal the power of God. They are going to show wonders. They are going to show wonders. Beloved, God has a plan. and He will reveal his mind through the people that he has sent and he has chosen. They will have covenant with God. And they will live in the time where the Antichrist is ruling. They will witness about Jesus Christ. They won't witness about themselves. They will exalt the name of the Lord High. And beloved, they will be given power. They will be given power that they can command the earth to do or anything to come on earth. They will be prophets of God. They will prophesy during three and a half years. And their age on earth, or their days on earth, will end up with being shot dead. Satan will kill them. They will be clothed in a sackcloth. So if you say that those prophets that you have, they are those men that God has raised from the uh, at this end side, the sign is that they will be clothed in sackcloth. Have you seen any prophets, famous prophets, who is in sackcloth? They will never have a desire to put on nice suits and nice appearances. They won't have this tie that I'm wearing. They will put on sackcloth. So those of you who are thinking that some men on earth are already befitting those uh, witnesses, I am appealing to you that turn away from that deception. Mm -hmm. They will be invisible for three and a half years of their ministry. Nobody will see them. You want to meet them here, but you can't. They will be invisible. And the day they will be visible, they will be shot dead. They will be invisible. When we read at chapter number 11, verse 5 and 7, And if any man will hurt them, fire proceed out of their mouth and devour the enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he, they, he must in this manner be killed. Any person that will try to hurt them cannot stand. God, they will have power to shut heaven and earth. They will have power. They will be given power from above and heaven will back them. They will cause fire. Fire will come out of their mouth. They will have power to stop rain. And they are going to do so many miracles that is going to hurt human's life on earth. And when those days are over, beloved, Antichrist will manifest like a human being and he will kill them. It is appointed unto a man to die. 
these men would also witness death. And after their death, they will be resurrected. They will be taken into the glory of God, where they will dwell with the Lamb forever and ever. Beloved, I want you to understand that the plans and the purpose God has for humanity, the plans and the purpose that God will have for humanity, is going to be very, very strange. Like I said, I was licking them to either Elijah and Moses or Elijah and Enoch that have stood for all this while. They have been on earth, but they never saw death. These are the two witnesses that never saw death. So I am assuming, because the Bible never mentioned their name, that these two witnesses could be Enoch and Elijah, or Elijah and Moses. But since Moses died, it will be fitting Elijah and Enoch more. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand John the Baptist wasn't Elijah. John the Baptist had a different ministry, like Elijah. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ confirmed about him that he is a man that came with the anointing of God to announce the birth of the Messiah. His ministry was to pronounce the birth of the Messiah. So John had completed his work. There are so many people that confirm and affirm that Elijah didn't finish. So Elijah might definitely come back on earth. In this Bible verse, the Bible never mentioned their name, that they are Elijah and Enoch or Elijah and Moses. But according to Zachariah, where we read Zachariah chapter 4, that say that they are the olive tree that have stood all over this while, They've been in the presence of God for all this while. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says that Enoch lived before time, he didn't see death according to Genesis chapter 5. Verse 21 to 24, as we read, he didn't see death. He was raptured or died seeing death. Hebrews chapter 11 also talks about Enoch living and not. But in the second case, also reveal another man called Elijah. Both were prophets of judgment. During their time, they brought judgment on earth. Everything that they did was pronouncing God's anger. So, it befitting these two prophets of old. They pronounced judgment. They pronounced judgment. Let's read something from the book of Jude. Book of Jude. Jude is only one chapter. Let's learn something there. We want to read the verse number. The book of Jude verses number. Uh, let's see. Verse number 14 to 15. 14 to 15 says, Enoch also... The servant from Adam prophesied of this saying, Behold, the Lord come with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. 
So, we hear that these two prophets are noted for declaring the judgment of God. Some people call them the prophets of doom. They are here to exercise God's judgment on earth. I want you to understand the time is now. The time is now. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, the apostle Paul made us aware that we will receive incorruptible body. We will receive incorruptible body. Death will be swallowed with victory. Power will be given unto the spirits to rule over our body. The death can no longer overcome man. Eve, Enoch, and Elijah have been translated in immortal, glorified body. They will have been the first fruits of the resurrection instead of Christ. They didn't receive that mortality. Why? Because when they were raptured, they didn't go to heaven. They went to paradise. They were not given the power to exercise immortality. Their body went to a place of rest without seeing death. The only two witnesses on earth that had never been overcome by Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. Therefore, these two witnesses will be given power to taste death. That every person that have come here on earth must taste death one way or the other. Apart from those that Jesus will give them power to be resurrected from the dead. So these two witnesses, I believe, and I will come back to the point, that they befitting more of Elijah and Enoch. That during that time, they will witness, and after their witnesses, they will die, and they will rise up again. And during their resurrection, or after their resurrection, they will not live here on earth anymore, but they will be raptured, and they will rise up and come and be together with us who had already been raptured. Beloved, what has these witnesses got to do with us? What they got to do with us is very, very less. So long as we are ready and we are preparing for the coming of Jesus Christ, which is the rapture of the church. Apostle Paul said that we all will not sleep. We all will not sleep, but in a momentarily, we will receive strength from above. We will be raptured into the glorious place. We are going to be with the Lord. Second, uh, First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. But let me jump from verse 51 to verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, at least at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound. And the dead shall rise up incorruptibly. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have to put on incorruptible. And this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, there, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. The sting of death is sin. Sin will cause a person to be sting. Sin will cause death. So what are we talking about? As many who can avoid sin by embracing the power of the Holy Spirit. Embracing the cross, they will be exempted from death. 
Christ has a special honor and a special place for those who have determined to walk with him. Chapter 11 is long, so I want to end here. Give opportunity to those people who have not accepted Jesus as their personal savior. And begin to think about the perilous time which is about to happen very soon. Can happen any moment from now. And men who have not given their life to Christ, they will suffer great pains. That is not my wish for you. That is not my desire for you. But my heart cry is that you will come to the divine knowledge and accept the Messiah now before it will be too late. If you are desiring to accept Jesus as your Savior and to live a righteous life until he comes, why don't you pray this short prayer after me? Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me from my righteous acts. And deliver my soul from eternal hell. Please give me your Holy Spirit. Please give me your mind. Please give me your spirit. Let me live all the days of my life for you. In Jesus' name. Beloved, if you have prayed that prayer, I want you to understand that my Jesus have answered that prayer. I encourage you to continue to listen to my teachings 24-7. On YouTube, my name is Pastor Gabriel Adade. On Facebook, you have Gabriel Adade and the same Pastor Gabriel Adade. Follow these teachings and it will help you. On my wife's profile also, love Adade, you have my videos and my teachings as well over there. Many have been saved, many have been changed. And I believe you are the next candidate to join us to make heaven. We have less time to live. We have nothing to live after this life here. We have nothing to live after this life here except hell or heaven. It is appointed unto a man to die. And after the death, there is a judgment. You will die one day and I will die one day. Think about that. If you get a whole world and you died and face the judgment of God. What would that judgment be? Think about that. And pursue holiness, righteousness, and truth. Because without that, nobody can see God. Do away with every worldliness. Take away anything that helps your soul captive from going to heaven. Desire heaven every minute, every second. To die on earth and not make in heaven is a wasteful lifestyle here on earth. Gaining the whole world by losing heaven, you are the most useless person. And being useless, God is going to burn you in fire. He will do that. Never allow anybody to tell you that it will never happen. Father, we have spoken the truth to your children. I pray that as they come closer to this truth, may this truth change their heart. Draw them closer. If there is anything said that they don't understand, Holy Spirit, please explain it to them. Grant them understanding that they will run unto you. All that you want them to know is that there is death and there is judgment awaiting for all human soul. And that judgment is not going to be sweet for those who have not wholeheartedly dedicated their soul and living every minute, every second with the consciousness and awareness of the danger that their soul imposes upon them. Father, help us to stand. Help us to live for you. In Jesus' name, We've prayed. Amen.